All right, all poured. We'll see how long it takes for we got to get on it with the power trial. I'm going to guess probably an hour and a half today. Probably 8 o'clock in the morning right now. We'll see. We'll see between 9 and 9.30 if we got to put a power trial on it. Hey everybody, so this is part two of my $100 gift card giveaway, and I'll be announcing the winner on Instagram, so go make sure you go over there, at Everything About Concrete, follow me on Instagram, and uh, if, if you haven't seen part one yet, I'll link that at the end of this video, so you got to make sure you're a subscriber, you got to like and share the video, and then on this video right here, I'll be reveal, revealing the exact time that I started Power Trial on the Concrete, so basically right now, what you're seeing right now, the time of day I started and that's what you got to comment down in this video so if you do all those things and you you comment the right time then I'm gonna be picking a winner from the whoever all of you that commented the right time I'll just randomly pick a winner and then you know I'll, I'll connect with you on Instagram and you'll be the hundred dollar gift card giveaway winner plus I'm gonna send you a free everything about concrete hooded sweatshirt so this is basically how we power trial all our floors here. You know, if we can, we'll back up to them with a crane, we'll lower them down in, and you know, one guy with that crane, one guy can finish a concrete floor like this pretty easily. As you can see, this one's in the shade. So the exact time I started was actually 9.52 a.m. Okay, so 9.52 a.m. in the morning. That's what you're gonna wanna comment down in the video. And like I said in the first video, the pouring video, the, the floors have been finishing up really, really fast this time of year. Now, I mean, this one here, you'll see as we go through right now, this is just the first hit. I'm using, I'm using one of our favorite power trials there from MBW, 36 inch power trial. I got combo blades on it so I can use them to both float. Which, which in our terms, in finishing terms, floating the concrete is this first hit right here. And then finishing the concrete is all the other hits. There's a couple ways we finish concrete with these power trials. One is we use combo blades like this one has, meaning you can use the same set of blades for every single hit. And the other way is sometimes we'll have with these steel finish blades on the power trial. They're kind of like a steel hand trial. And then for this first hit, we'll slide over a little bit more aggressive set of blades right over the steel finish blades, and we call those float blades. We have those, some of our power trials are set up for those type of blades, and then some of them are set up with the combo blades like this. It's kind of a preference thing, really. We, my, guys, my guys tend to like the combo blades more now, and when they first started finishing, they liked they like the other way, you know, having the, the float blades slide on over the finish blades and then you kick them off after the first hit and then you just use the steel finishing blades. So I'm getting done with the first hit here. I'm going to jump out. I'm going to let it sit for a little while and then, you know, let it cure up a little bit, get a little bit harder. And then I'm coming back in here on my second hit. And we, we kind of do this on almost all our hits is we'll go around and make sure the edges are really, really smooth and flat. This is what real finishers do. Concrete guys that know how to finish concrete will go around and make sure their edges look really, really good. Because if you don't, those are going to stand out to anybody that, that knows anything about concrete floors is going to come and look at that and look at those edges. And if those aren't good, they're going to know that you're not a real true concrete finisher. So... We spend a lot of time on the edges, making sure they're really, really nice and smooth by the time we get all done. This is actually the second time I've gone around. So I'll go around the first time with my mag float and just kind of get them all flattened, get everything filled in really nice, get them good and flat. And then from there on in, I'll use my steel hand trowel and I'll go around and hit every time. I'm just kind of wiping out that, uh, that's what we call a bulkhead in these foundations, that little small area back there. So I just kind of wipe that out with a steel trowel by hand because that's never going to see any sun in there. And then, as you can see, we just go around. That's a 14-inch steel trowel, 14 by 4, they call it. 
and just smooth those edges out. You know, the power trowel will get up pretty darn close to the edge, but it's not going to get all the way up to the wall. So you're going to have to get around. If you want them to look really nice, you're going to have to bend over there and do them by hand like that. So here's the second hit. I do kind of crank the blades up just a little bit. I try to keep them as flat as possible on that first hit without them digging in. And then on the second hit here where the concrete's a little bit firmer, it's a little bit harder on the surface, I'll just crank them up just a tiny little bit more and kind of do that throughout the process. Usually a floor like this in the summer, you know, anyways from May to probably September, it'll take about four different hits with the power trial like this. As long as we give them enough time in between hits to cure up and dry up a little bit, Usually by that fourth hit, they're really smooth, and they're pretty much done after that. Let's see what happens here. You can see how that's still looking kind of rough there, but it's all part of the process of smoothing this thing out. You can't wait too long, or the blades just won't do their job, and you obviously, you don't want to get on it too early. You're going to create some, you know, a lot of humps and waves in the floor. So timing when finishing is, is really critical. And I... If you guys want to learn how to do this stuff, whether it's pouring concrete or finishing like we do, you know, you can, I got a link for my concrete underground down in the description below. You can check that out. I have all my training videos in there. I teach all this stuff in there if you guys want to learn this stuff. It's basically just a timing thing, like I said, especially if you've got parts of this that are in the shade and parts are in the sun. You know, the last thing you want to do is get on it too late, especially if you're by yourself <laughs> like this. But if you don't want to get on it too, too early either, you just want to, it, you just got to feel it out. You know, I like, see how I'm leaving a, a, just barely leaving a footprint there in the concrete as I'm walking. That's kind of, that's kind of what I use to gauge the timing by. I don't want to leave a real wet footprint in the concrete. I kind of want to, I kind of want the the footprint to look a little bit dry, but just maybe a little bit of moisture under my feet as I'm doing edges like this or if I'm walking on it. Now, I, there might be, on a day like today, there might be 30 minutes in between each time I hit the floor. You know, it could be could be 40 minutes or it could be 20 minutes, depending on if it's in the sun or not. It's all going to change depending on air temperature, what how much is getting in the sun. Um, basically, those two things are critical right there. Now the edges are really getting hard now. I'm really burning them out with my hand trowel. And then again, my third hit here, crank the blades up just a tiny bit more. And when I say crank them up, it could be a sixteenth of an inch. It could be, you know, an eighth of an inch higher than the previous time. It's it's not a lot. It's just a little bit. We always run the power trials in a certain pattern too, you know, and we cross that pattern every time we hit the floor and that just helps flatten the surface even more so each time you hit it. You can't, you're not really supposed to just run these things kind of randomly all over the floor. I know everybody's taught a little bit differently, but this is, this is the type of pattern we've had really good luck with and you know, our floors seem to come out really, really flat. You know, usually they're, you know, between the laser, the self-leveling laser you use to pull with and then, you know, screeding and bolt floating and then power trialing like this, usually they're within about an eighth of an inch up and down. Not, they're never going to be perfectly flat. Nothing, you know, you do by hand like this is ever going to be perfect. And I'm just looking as I'm power trawling there, I'm looking to make sure the blades are filling in all like the the rough spots from before, the pattern before, smoothing the concrete floor out a little bit more, making it look smoother. And the blades are just kind of, they're just working up the paste, but because it's harder and firmer, they're smoothing it out also at the same time. You can see when I'm walking on that concrete there, before I hit it with a power trial, when, sometimes in the shade I'll leave just a little bit of footprint like that. That usually means that it's about ready. And then in the sun, I might not leave any footprint like that. So the timing on this hit here was really, really good.
Yeah, I went all the way around the edge first, kind of worked up a little bit of paste. That just sometimes that makes doing the edges a little bit easier. That's honestly doing those edges like that. That's probably one of the harder things to do when it comes to finishing, <laughs> bending over and doing all those edges by yourself. Running the power trial is not too too bad if you know what you're doing. That's actually pretty easy. That thing, you know, it works in a certain way. You push down on the handles and it goes one way and you lift up on them and it goes the other so you just kind of have to hang on to the handles really good and you never want to let go of those handles as the power trial is running because that those handles will just spin around and hit you but it's, it kind of you know once you get used to it, it it runs it's pretty easy to run actually and I may so I, you know depending on how firm or how dry that surface is will kind of depend on how high the RPMs I have on that thing too. It, in the shade right here, I don't need to crank the RPMs way up like like they could be. If I was out all in the sun, I'd have them spin. I'd have those blades spinning a lot faster. So I would say right now, timing-wise, so I started at 9.52. This is probably a little more than an hour later than that. So, you know, 11, 11, 15 in the morning right now. And then after this hit, because it's pretty darn smooth right now, and it, but a lot of it's in the shade. I bet I gave it about a half an hour just to sit there and, and dry up a little bit before I come back and hit it again. Now I'm, work, I'm working my, my way back to that little bulkhead. I got my ladder there so I can jump out. Remember that bulkhead, this is going to be a set of stairs that come down over that. And, and all that concrete floor in this little bulkhead area, that will be covered. You won't even see that. That's kind of why I just wipe it out by hand. I'm just wiping out my footprints right now. All right, so here's the fourth hit. And if, if you, I don't know if you can tell, but it's starting to blacken out just a little bit on the surface. We call, we also call that burning out or shining out. Everybody's got a little bit different term for it. I don't know, what, what do you guys use? We usually use shined out. So it's starting to shine out a little bit, which means that's done. It's not gonna get any smoother than that. So I'm gonna just buzz over it again for this fourth time, get it all shined out. Which is, in it I, again, I might crank the blades up just a tiny bit more on this one. Just to create a little less friction, a little bit more pitch on the blades, a little more down pressure on the, on the blades. Sometimes that helps shine it even more. And this hit usually goes pretty fast. I mean, I can move pretty quick on this one. The other, the other hits, you can see I sped up in the video just a little bit, but this one I'm leaving in real time. And it didn't take me very long at all to hit both these sections of floor. Cranking the RPMs up a little bit too on more on this hit too. A floor like this in the shade, you can see, you know, finishing it by myself, it's really not too bad. I come from I come from, you know, when I was when I was being taught how to do this stuff. We did commercial stuff, so I was I was used to doing 10,000, 15,000 square foot floors, you know, and a lot of times we were shorthanded. A lot of times we, we'd have to go back, stop finishing before the guys were even done pouring, so I was usually always the first one that went back finishing, and I'd have to try to, you know, keep up finishing by myself as much as I possibly could so we wouldn't have to drop any more guys back from the pour, so I learned... I learned how to finish concrete really fast and a lot of square footage by myself just from those old days back then when we used to do big commercial stuff and we were just shorthanded on guys it seemed like all the time so you know when I drop back down to finishing a residential floor like this this is this seems really easy to me you can kind of see over there on the right hand side now that's kind of changing color there it's getting a little darker that's kind of shining out really nice and this is basically the final stage of finishing right now. Not even really leaving footprints anymore. Concrete surface is really, really smooth. And then just 
the next thing after this, I'd just be sawing some joints in this with my, with my early entry, my green cutting saw, which I'm going to show you the setup here on it. I'll show you what I did to set up, you know, snap my chalk lines. I'll kind of show you what the saw looks like here in a minute. I'm going to get this power trial out of here first. You know, if, if I didn't have the crane on the back of that truck, getting this power trial out would be a real pain. I, before we got those cranes, we used to have to do it. We'd have to try to lift them up by hand, get them out over the top of the wall, and I don't know how we didn't hurt ourselves back then, but then we got those cranes. I found those cranes at uh, Harbor Freight. You can just get the crane mounted. They come with like a boat crank on them. We take that right off. We just buy a little winch, and we mount the winch on there, and then you can just hook that to your battery, or you can hook it to a, like a jumper battery like I'm using right there. And that's really how to get them out of there and move them things around. Then we just swing it over and clean it, drop it in the truck, and then it's good for the next one. So here I am. I'm measuring out for my cuts. And what I do is, you know, I try to make them, I'll probably put two going the shorter way and then one down the middle of the long way. So we just measure that out, snap a chalk line, and then basically the... The saw I'm using is an early entry saw. I, I mean, they don't make this one anymore. Husvarna bought out this company called Softcut, and Softcut is the one that invented these early entry saws years ago. So we have, I got two or three of these electric ones, then we got a gas one we use too. Today I just had the electric one, but it's basically like using a skill saw with a diamond blade that has a handle on it. I'll show you a picture of it right here, and then we just cut a joint in there. It goes down about an inch, and that helps control the cracks. That's it right there. So thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one, guys.